It's hard enough to plan a wedding, but add a large and involved Italian family and a jealous ex-boyfriend who's trying to stop the wedding, not to mention the desire to have a traditional Italian wedding ceremony, and you have the hilarious plot to My Big Gay Italian Wedding. We're here with the play's writer and one of the co-stars, Anthony Wilkinson, who will talk to us about the show's one-day benefit revival right on Staten Island. Thanks for joining us. So I gave a bit of a snippet of, of what the audience mm -hmm. can expect, but tell me what the play's about. Well, really, it's um, the story of Anthony Pannunziato, who I play, um, who is trying to have a wedding um, and wants to have a traditional Italian-American wedding. And he wants his parents to give him away, and he wants the whole ceremony. And basically, his parents will give him those that you know his this wedding under two stipulations that if it's performed by a catholic priest and if he, and if andrew his partner's mother is in on this as well and of course that's not the case and um we you know there's a jealous boyfriend who comes and tries to mix and mingle there's the whole italian family element which adds to the comedy and then of course we draw on the whole gay wedding and the issues of gay marriage but it's totally a comedy and it's uh there's a lot of music and there's a lot of dance numbers and it's just a really fun night out it sounds like a, f a lot of fun and you've touched upon a lot of the characters and, and as the point is there there's someone in the play that everyone can relate to or a relative that everyone exactly. can relate to absolutely there's two aunts there's the crazy Italian mother, Italian father, there's the sister, there's, you know, and then there's your, you know, your couple of Anthony's friends who are, you know, the animated gay guy, the animated gay wedding coordinator, a couple of lesbians just to spice it up, and it's, it's really a fun show. What do you want people to take away from the show? Well, one of the things that when I set the show back in 2002, um, I wrote it knowing that gay marriage was a hot topic then, and we were only able to stage it off Broadway in the village because that was probably the only place it would be well received. But now the times are changing and gay marriage has become legal in a couple of states. I wanted to take the opportunity to try to stage it in my hometown of Staten Island, which growing up was very homophobic. And I truly believe that that has changed in a lot of ways. And I would like to bring, you know, this show to my hometown to try to show that things are better and people are much more open-minded to this kind of thing so that hopefully, you know, steps down the road we can legalize gay marriage in New York. We do talk about Staten Island being your hometown and, and the St. George Theater has oh. a place in your heart. The day I walked into that theater, I said, I am dying to do a show here. And I was with my father who passed away last year and I said to him, I would love to do a show here. And he said, you will, you will. And so this is a dream come true for me to do a show in this theater. It really is. And you have a great cast that you work with, including Scott Evans, who plays Officer Fish on One Life to Live. Yes, and he is absolutely phenomenal to work with. And um, he is playing my husband in the show. And he sings and he dances, and he's just a pleasure, pleasure to work with. And he's really doing well. This play actually opened off-Broadway in 2003. Uh -huh. And what's the hope after this revival on Staten Island? Well, the the hope that night, I mean, is basically to raise as much money as we can for the Lust Garden Foundation, which is for pancreatic cancer research. One of my uh, producers is her brother is suffering with um, pancreatic cancer, so our hopes is to raise as much money as we can on this night. But we are bringing some investors to see the show, with hopes that now, with the timing, you know, of gay marriage being a hot topic, that maybe it belongs back off Broadway. So who knows? We really don't know what'll come from this, but it could just be one beautiful night in Staten Island. But I guess, you know, we can only see and hope for the best. And we did mention the charity that, that you'll be raising money for. Why did you choose this charity? Well, Sonia Blanjardo, who's directing the show with Teresa Sakala, her brother is 32 years old, and he is um, very ill with pancreatic cancer. So um, it's, a, you know, it's very close to her. So we chose that charity to help raise money for the Lust Garden Foundation, which is for pancreatic cancer research. What is it out there that you want Staten Islanders to know about your show? It's hilarious. Anyone who is from Staten Island will totally relate to every character and every line in the show. And um, it's a fun night out. It's, there's going to be a big after party. And it's just, it's a good time. It's a good time. It's the best I could say. There's no, it's not, I'm not banging anyone off the head with political messages. Or It's a total comedy. Good fun music. Come see it. 
and the show will be at the St. George Theater on September 12th at 8 p.m. You can purchase tickets at Ticketmaster.com. This definitely sounds like a show you won't want to miss. Thank you so much for joining us, Anthony. It's such a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. And it's back to you from the studio.